in continuation to environmental impact assessment topic this lecture we will uh, actually get into part 7 of environmental impact assessment if you recall in the last lecture we discussed about all the different steps in eia if you recall that we talked about emp mitigation plan analysis of alternative impact analysis predictions baseline collections and tor so these are the aspects scoping and screening so from screening till our discussions on follow up of eia exercises has already taken place in the previous lecture now in this part 7 we will talk about environment impact assessment and public participation it is very very critical that the people the community public should actually take participation in this activity because anything that is being done within this eia exercise in the center of everything is people all right so their participation is very very important we will discuss about people participation how they can participate what are the different aspect that we will elaborate now public participation is one of the center pieces of eia process and if you see that the involvement of various stakeholder groups such as local people project beneficiaries non-government organizations various experts they provide lot of knowledge information for this exercise and public participation in this activity strengthen this entire exercise next the international association for impact assessment iaia in 2006 defines the public participation in the context of environmental assessment and this they said that the involvement of individuals or groups that are positively or negatively affected by any kind of project or activity in their area or that are interested in in a proposed project or program plan on policy that is subject to a decision making process so you see that including united nations they also feel the importance of people participation in eia activity the use of term participation you will find it is appropriate only in cases where participants have significant control of the decision making process and where they can also influence the decision making process so in a sense public has to be empowered and how they can become empowered they need to participate in the activity they should own also the activity because ultimately everything is being done for them so their participation their role in decision making process is also critical recently there is an upsurge in attention paid to public consultation various discourses especially with the increase of environmental related awareness various program competition quiz drama in various form now the level of awareness or the effort for increasing the awareness has really gone up most of the international and national environmental legislations are now you know making specific and detailed provisions for public participation and discourse so public participation is also legally made kind of a compulsory aspect public participation in eia is commonly known to foster democratic policy making process and if people participation is there in the policy making certainly that policy will be more effective so public participation in eia is important now next point is designing a public consultation and discourse we call it pc and d now this kind of team you need to prepare who will work with the people with the community now this team will have a clearly 
define expectation for what this team hopes to accomplish along with the public, with the people participation. Stakeholder identification and mapping based on their interest and influences is also important. While designing public consultation and discourse, try to target those segments of the public which are most likely to see themselves as impacted by a decision, right? It's obvious, no? Suppose if I am one of the community person where a new project is coming and if you find that I am one of the potential public who can get impacted by the proposed project, then you should actually take me into your team. You understand? Because having me into your team actually will help your cause. Because I am potentially can be affected by the proposed project. So, if you take me into confidence, then lot of issues are resolved. Not only that you can avoid certain activities which may cause some kind of damage, but also you can avoid any kind of complaints or any kind of negative activity once the project starts without taking me into confidence. Then next is be well integrated into the decision making process. When the decision making process takes place, already we have understood in the previous lectures that it is a pain taking process. It goes to several steps and if in this process, if you integrate the people, the public, the community into that, then definitely your decision making process will be much more robust. Try to involve interested stakeholders in every step of decision making, not just at the final stage. That is the mistake often we do. Try to provide alternative levels of participation, which should be based upon the public's level of interest and reflecting the diversity of those who are going to participate. Try to provide also genuine opportunities to the public to influence the decision. Remember any decision that will be taken it is for those people. So, why not take them into the process? Take into account the participation of internal stakeholders as well as external stakeholders, very very important. If you recall that in one of the previous lectures I mention about the internal criteria, external criteria. Sometime you will find that in the project area, the community, the people, they might have agreed. They found when you convince them after you know good consultation, they may say yes to the project. But you will find sometime some people who are outside that area, they may create some issue for you and you may not be able to start the project. So, take into account participation of those external entities as well. How public participation can be integrated into a project cycle? Now, say these are the projects you know cycle, these are EIA component and what are the different public participation activity. This is a very wonderful table, try to understand it, it is very easy to remember also. Project cycle first pre feasibility, when you actually look for whether the project is feasible or not. In that, what are the EIA components are involved? Environmental screening, environmental examination and scoping. Now, for each one of them, you have different public participation activity. For environmental screening, you identify groups and begins initial contact with different groups within the community. When you start examinations, you continue consultation and the public will provide also some input into your IE. Next is scoping. In scoping, you identify major issues for scoping and terms of reference using public input and this will make further plan for your public involvement. Okay. Next feasibility. Now, feasibility which one of the EIA component is involved? Impact assessment. Now, what you have to do for public participation? Public reviews, comments on the EIA report that we discussed in previous lecture that once the EIA report is ready, you have to upload it, share it with public, give some time to review and give comment. That is a more democratic way of doing it. 
So, the public reviews and comments on the draft AI report is one of the participation activity in case of feasibility. They also provide inputs to design and survey. Okay. Then next is your detailed survey and design. Which one is the AI component? Integration of mitigation measures. How you involve participation? Detailed design made available to public. You give it to the people. There is, you know, sometime we have this uh, tendency of working something and not sharing with anyone, keep it within us, even though we are doing it for the people. We are not ready to share with the people for whom actually we are working. We think always insecure. If I give it to him or her, you know, my importance is gone. But remember, if you are working for the society, then society has the right to know what you are working on. So, the detailed design needs to be given to them. Construction and operation part of your project cycle, which EIA component environmental monitoring. We discussed in great detail, right, in previous lectures, how public participation is ensured. Public will provide you input to post evaluation of impact and mitigation measures during the monitoring process. When you talk with the people, people will provide you. Now, those points are also very important for a successful EIA. Now, what are the public participation techniques? We already discussed that yes, people participation is important, people role in decision making is important, but how you involve them? How you ensure the participation should take place? Because when we work in the field, many times we have found, even though suppose we are willing to take people with us, but they do not come for various reasons. Now, what is the participation technique that you can use to engage them in this activity? So, there are few techniques for getting people involvement. One is that you give to the public some information, whatever you get during the evaluation process, you give it to the people through press releases, newsletters without expecting their feedback. But if you give it to them, at least few will actually look through or study those things, right. The other one is getting from the public, that can be also one way. Suppose we did not want any input at that point of time, but people are sending inputs, okay. Or sometime we go for questionnaire survey, where also it will be one way. People will give feedback into the questionnaire, you bring it back and they will analyze. The third way could be exchanging information. You give, they also give. And there are lot of interactions between the project proponent, the public, you know, everybody gets involved. So, certainly this is a better option to go for participations, right? Exchanging information. When you go to select any technique, it is always wise to build on existing communication channel. The channels which you already have in that area. Suppose some people might have worked and some kind of you know networks have been developed, some groups have been formed. Try to utilize those with the existing one because they are familiar with the community, they know how government works. So, the existing network should be also involved. There is no public participation technique which will work in all circumstances. So, you do not have a kind of a magic stick. Sometime you will find that people will talk very good about a successful public participation program. They will talk about different program, how people have involved, all right. A very next moment you might find that in, it, in a nearby place, people are not coming. So, Similar methodology, similar kind of technique may work in one place and may not work in other place. So, it is a very dynamic process. Working with people is not easy. So, when you work with people, you need to think yourself as one of them and try to see what are their expectations. If we can get that particular chord of the people, your success is almost ensured. And Another important thing is that if we continuously give information from us to them, means one way, 
that also not good people might find that you have a agenda so in these kind of cases after your few initial effort you should actually wait for the people to come back to you so this kind of processes actually we learn through lot of experience on the ground most of the eia projects usually have no monitoring systems of this is built into their structure now techniques for monitoring or evaluating public consultation they may include different kind of understanding of the consultations by the people and the consultations content their language their level of technicality these are important aspect that how you can actually get the participation of the people into project design and implementation you will also find that through appropriate use of monitoring evaluation public consultation strategies can be adjusted during the project cycle to improve the stakeholder participation information dissemination strategies and mechanisms for integrating the participants feedback into a project design and implementation is very very important now from out of my own experience i would like to share one thing with you in such kind of people participation aspect suppose if you a engineer civil mechanical whatever and you go to the public to develop a propose a project there and then you talk with them in the very first time that you are meeting you are talking with them in a very technical term without feeling that your those things have no meaning to them they have come there to listen you what you are going to deliver to them so focus on that instead of too much of technicalities because anyway they will not understand your engineering terminologies concept for them what good you are going to do for them so focus on that and that will actually encourage the participation of the people from the very beginning in any project once they are interested and they find that this project is going to do some good for them they will automatically will come and participate this is my personal experience from the ground now let us discuss about eia review we already discussed that after eia report is ready we must share with people public put it in website anywhere and keep it for some time to invite some comments and reviews the draft eia report should be submitted to the national resources conservation authority or nrca for technical review government agencies other than nrca may also be required to participate in the review depending upon what kind of project you are taking suppose you are going to take irrigation project you should consult with agricultural institutions ica or indian council of agriculture research the draft eia report is established or distributed to various organizations such as public libraries relevant organizations near the project sites you could also arrange a public presentation outreach talking about you know different aspect of the project strategic environmental assessment or sea is a systematic process for evaluating the environmental consequences of the proposed policy and this is done to ensure that they are fully included in and appropriately addressed at the very beginning of your decision making process and this should be an integral part of the draft review people's perceptions people opinion also should be integrated once approved policy and statutes are defined and the draft finally becomes an full page eia report with proper license to carry out the development activity following all the norms and guidelines as mentioned in the report okay next is environmental audit auditing of environmental aspect is a major thing in today's world without environmental auditing no project will be sanctioned now environmental audit it is done in order to capitalize on the experience and knowledge that is gained during the eia the last stage of eia is to carry out the environmental audit sometime 
after the completion of the project or implementation of a program. So, environmental audit comes at the almost last stage of EIA. Environment audit, it is done by a separate team of specialist, not by the people who are involved with the EIA. A totally different group of people will work on the environment auditing. The audit includes an analysis of the technical, procedural and decision making aspects of the EIA. Technical aspects like the adequacy of the baseline studies, the accuracy predictions of the suitability of mitigation measures, these aspects are included in the environment auditing. Procedural aspects in environmental auditing, what kind of procedures will follow? The efficiency of the procedures, the fairness of the public involvement measures and the degree of coordinations of roles and responsibilities of every individuals or system. Decision making aspects include the utility of the process for decision making and the implications for development. And you will see that in environmental audit, generally it tries to determine whether recommendation and requirements made by the earlier EIA steps were incorporated successfully in the project implementation or not. You understand? So, audit actually like financial audit in environmental audit also, they will look into those things whether the recommendations which are made in EIA has been successfully followed up in the project implementation or not. Various lessons which are learned and formally described in an audit can actually assist in future EIAs and also build up the expertise and efficiency of the concerned institutions who are involved for such kind of project development. So, audit gives us an idea that where are the points in previous EIA people actually face issues where there are some loopholes. So, those things can be avoided in the next EIA exercise. So, audit is something kind of quality check. The international organization of supreme audit institution in TOSAI, its frameworks defines environmental auditing as number one, environment auditing is not significantly different from normal auditing as practiced by supreme audit institutions or SAIs. Environment auditing encompasses all types of auditing that is financial, compliance and performance audit. Number 3, the concept of sustainable development can be part of environmental audit only if it is a part of the government policy or program which is to be audited. Now, an environment audit report or we call it EAR is required to be submitted for review and also for approval in the type of a constructional environmental management plan which we call CEMP. An operational environmental management plan we call it OEMP or environmental impact assessment division or EAD document. So, this slide on environment audit has lot of information you must concentrate focus on at least absorbing these informations. I repeat environment audit report is required to be submitted for review and also approval from CEMP or OEMP or EAD environment impact assessment division alright. So, you see that over almost 7 lectures we are discussing about one aspect that is EIA. And I told in the beginning that this is one of the important aspect that we must actually learn to the best of our capacity. Objective of environment audit, why do we do audit for environmental assessment? Now, you all know why financial audit done similar way to reduce any mistakes, irregularity in the systems of environment auditing, environment impact assessment, environment auditing is done establish a baseline of existing environmental conditions with a focus on natural and physical environment that is one of the objective to establish a baseline. Second, 
understanding the current practices of sustainability in that area with regard to the use of water, energy, generation of wastes, purchase of goods, transportation. So, because all these things utilize environment resources in one or other way. Third, awareness generation among students concerning real issues of environment and its sustainability. Next, promotion of environmental awareness through participatory auditing process means you also involve community into the auditing process so that they should also know that what are the places that something some mistakes are done knowingly or unknowingly. Another objective is to create a report that document baseline data of good practices and provide strategies and actions plans towards improving the environment quality of that area in future. Okay? So, these are the basic objectives of environmental audit. What are the different types of environmental audit? Number 1, compliance audit. Number 2, liability audits. 3, program audits. 4, single issue audits. And 5, risk definition or hazard identification audits. Now, these are 5 very important types of environmental audit which are often carried out in case of EIA exercise at the very last stage of your EIA exercise. Okay? So, next is that environment audit process. So, now let us see the environmental audit process how actually it takes place. The first process is pre-auditing activities. These pre-auditing activities it comprise of scheduling, team selection. Team selection means the people who actually will be carrying out the auditing exercise, logistical arrangement, gathering background information and developing the audit plan. The most crucial part of this particular process is the selection of auditors and the auditors that you will be selecting, they must have adequate knowledge in all aspect of EIA with an very independent and unbiased approach because you can understand in EIA report, if you give a positive report, a project actually will be implemented and if you give negative, it will be rejected. So, you understand rest of the things, how sensitive important it, this could be and the people involved in this auditing process need to be very honest and unbiased ideally. An appropriate for research with kind of inclination to develop and apply new techniques and methodologies related to good environmental performances. So, these are some of the essence or some of the criteria that you will be looking in the auditors that you will be selecting. So, these auditors not only that they should have a very good kind of grasp of knowledge on environment related aspect, also all the methodologies of EIA they should be well aware of and of course, they should understand the amount of importance associated with the audit the environmental audit that they are going to carry out. Second is the audit process. The key activities which are included within this audit process are understanding management system of that proposed project, assessing the strength and weakness of that management system, gathering audit evidences, evaluating audit finding and reporting audit finding to the management. So, in every step, unbiased approach is the key of the success of environmental auditing. Third one, post audit activities. Once the auditing has been carried out, then what? Post audit activities are actually to ensure that audit results are clearly communicated to the appropriate level of management and provide suggestions for improving the future audit. Suppose it is a 10 years project. So, after 2 years, you want to have another audit or maybe annual audit. So, if you have a good already system, auditing systems, results documented in appropriate manner, then the future auditing activities become much more easier. Post audit activities also includes preparation of a draft report, issue a final report to the legal counsel and develop an action plan and continue the follow up. Okay? Now, next comes EAR, Environment Audit Report. Your auditing is done. Now, 
on the basis of auditing you need to prepare the auditing report which you finally give it to the management level an ear document ideally is an independent accurate and detailed assessment of environmental performance for a development project or any industrial facility also the ear is used to assess the implementation of projects or the facilities environment management system ems if you can recall at the very beginning of this mooc course we discussed about ems environment management system and its compliance with the various legal permits ear should be clear timely conscious and objective oriented it should provide a fair summary of all the relevant facts and demonstrate conformity with the approved environmental norms and regulation of that particular country or state or location where the project is going to take place the objective of a ear is to provide the interested parties with a clear indication of the environmental performances for the period that is covered by the auditing team or the audit exercise say 2021 22 or 21 to 25 you have to actually mention the time period the audit report also provides information required to develop an environmental action plan which is we call eap in the event of any significant findings of negative impacts to the environment if you find during the audit process or ei exercise that there is a negative impact then you need to go for an eap and also help the project proponent to take necessary steps eaar also try to compile the findings and recommendations of the audit effort clearly and concisely the usefulness of environmental audit report is the major by how well the problems are identified evaluated documented and finally addressed in adequate and straight forward mitigation measures or collective actions so there should be a very much clear indication that for the activity 1 this is the negative impact for the process 1 this is the negative impact and for this this is the mitigation measure that you should follow so there should not be any kind of ambiguity in the entire process next benefits of environmental auditing what are the benefits number 1 it enables environmental problems and risks to be anticipated and responses planned accordingly this is the word is important that it actually enables to anticipate that what is the problem might be there in future and accordingly you prepare you accordingly you find out your responses of course that is going to help the project to sustain it also demonstrate that an organization is aware of its impact on the environment through providing feedback it also helps in increasing the management and employee awareness on the environmental issues because that report will have everything in detail telling how much where and how the impact has taken place and ear environment auditing also it's a efficient resource use and finance savings kind of facilitating tool if your auditing is correct and auditing is done in a very appropriate manner this is going to help an efficient resource management and also you can save money it provides better public and private image and of course security to the top management if your audit is good and if the audit has been done with a very unbiased approach that will definitely will have a good impact about your company or about your project in the society as well as in the ecosystem where actually your project is located so public perceptions about your project or initiative also will be good so see that a good audit report is not only just few numbers and facts but it also influence your credibility your acceptance or perception in public okay now i will talk about few eia related studies what are the different kind of studies which actually under eia that can be carried out one of such study is social impact assessment sia 
SIA includes the process of analyzing, monitoring and managing the intended and both unintended social consequences. It could be both positive or negative of planned interventions and any other social changes invoked by those interventions. Van Clay has talked about in his paper in great detail about this aspect, about this social impact assessment study. SIA, when you carry out an analysis, SIA should include the use of land, culture, main economic activities like tourism, agriculture, different other employment opportunities, their impact on the service provision or livelihood like education, water use, traffic, energy use. So, this thing also should be there in the social impact assessment study. The primary purpose of SIA is to bring about a more sustainable and equitable physical and human environment. Social impact assessment also assumes that social, economic and biophysical impacts are interconnected. We discussed about this interconnectivity of these three aspects, social, economic, biophysical in earlier lecture if you recall. So, therefore, this social impact assessment also ensure there is no mismatch between the development and socio-cultural or economic aspect of the project area. There is no mismatch means you cannot have just development like straight away increasing and on the other side you see that there is a decline of environment or other social aspect. So, there has to be a balance between the development that you wish to see and also the society, the culture, the economic condition of that area must be also maintained. Second kind of study under EIA, health impact assessment. So, health impact assessment is actually a key component of EIA these days because health is determined by multiple factors including socio-economic and environmental factors. Any development project that you can think of, health assessment is one of the key one, public health, ecosystem health. So, these are certain aspects that can be covered under health impact assessment study. There is no clear definition though about where health concerns end and where environmental and socio concerns begin. Remember, there is no clear cut definition where our health concerns end and where environmental social concerns begin. No clear cut definition. It cannot be because we want both healthy human as well as environment. Health impact assessment is a broad concept which may be you know interpreted in different ways by a range of different users. But at the end of a day, it implies an interest in the safeguarding and enhancement of human health and a concern that human activities and any decisions that we take in the form of having a development project or plan or program or policy can affect human health in both positive or negative ways. So, we need to look at that aspect. Under health impact assessment, we can see that strategic environmental assessment SEA. SEA is undertaken much earlier in the decision making process itself within EIA. It is therefore seen as a key tool for sustainable development. If you see that strategic environmental assessment, it aims to incorporate environmental in one hand, sustainability consideration also into it. Such as during your formulation of policies, plans and program, you try to incorporate this environment and sustainability issues into it. It is not easy, but effort has to be made. ACA assesses the extent to which a particular given policy, plan or program provides adequate response to environment and climate change related challenges. It may adversely affect the environment and climate resilience or offers opportunity to enhance the state of environment and contribute to climate resilience and also helps in low carbon development. So, ACA is important from these aspects. Finally, Having said over the last 6 or 7 lectures about all the aspects of EIA, now let us see that what are the shortcomings of EIA process. First, applicability. There are several projects with significant environmental impacts. 
that you will find they are exempted from the notification either because they are not listed in the schedule schedule 1 or their investment are less than what is provided in the notification. So, for that reason the applicability is not there. Second, composition of expert committees and standards. It has been found quite often that the team that are formed for conducting EIS studies lacks the expertise in various fields such as environment, wildlife, anthropology and social aspect. That is why remember in one of the previous lectures I mentioned selection of expert selection of experienced person in the EIA team is a critical exercise like also selection of auditors is a critical exercise. Public hearing and other shortcomings, public comments are not considered at an early stage and that often leads to conflict at a later stage of project clearance. What is the problem to listen to the public at the planning stage itself because we are doing the project for them. So, let us make the process very democratic and inclusive and if you involve that which I have already you know discussed in great detail in the previous lecture that how public needs to be informed and public has to be you know taken into consideration in the process public participation is key. A number of projects with significant environmental and social impacts have been excluded from the mandatory public hearing processes you will find that also happen. The data collectors sometimes do not pay respect to the indigenous knowledge of local people that is another problem. We feel that we are we are expert, we are knowledgeable, we are PhDs and we have studied the subject. When we go to the field sometimes we knowingly unknowingly ignore the knowledge base of our indigenous people that is another shortcomings. So, friends these are the shortcomings we should keep in mind and go ahead for a EIA process because as you understood that without a good EIA it is almost impossible to have a very you know sound and sustainable project implemented in any place anywhere. Next quality of EIA one of the biggest concerns with the environmental clearance process is related to the quality of EIA report that are being carried out by the team. People often has concerns about the quality, lack of credibility. There are so many cases of fraudulent you know EIA studies where erroneous data has been used, same facts used for two totally different places. Can you imagine? Suppose one project is taking in Uttar Pradesh, another is taking in Punjab without going to the field or without studying both areas one areas result has been used for the other one how can that be. So, if it happens once then the credibility of the entire team or exercise come under question often and more and so strategic industries such as nuclear energy project the reports are kept confidential for political and administrative reasons. Details regarding the effectiveness and implementation of mitigation measures are often not provided. Emergency preparedness plans are not discussed in sufficient details and the information not disseminate to the communities. Now, how in case suppose even if a project was sanctioned after a appropriate analysis appropriate EIA, but some accident might happen. If it happens then if community is not well prepared how they will cope up. So, the emergency preparedness plans also has to be in place and also communicated to the people, but that also sometimes does not take place that is also an important shortcomings of EI process. So, friends we discussed about a lot of important aspect of EIA and most of them are very good sound, but we also should remember these few points the shortcomings of EIA. If we are careful about these shortcomings and if we can avoid as much as possible EIA tool or exercise is a wonderful process for successful implementation of development projects in anywhere, any place. Mm -hmm.